Hello everyone and thanks for watching this video. What I'm gonna do today, uh, based on some feedbacks that I got from you guys, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, Microsoft Graph API a bit and how we can acquire an access token uh, from Microsoft Identity Platform and then use that access token as a bearer token to call Graph API. Uh, if you if you are interested in uh, what Microsoft Graph API is, uh, there's a bunch of different documents on Microsoft website. You can have a look at them and have a read. Uh, but in a nutshell, uh, Microsoft Graph API is a RESTful web API, uh, and it gives you this uh, capability to uh, access Microsoft Cloud Services resources. Uh, for instance, you can uh, read a user from your Active Directory using um, RESTful API. You can create a new user there. You can delete an existing user. Um, you can um, create a custom policy in your B2C tenant or etc. Many different things. Uh, so if you need to access the Graph API, probably uh, this is a good video to watch for you, uh, but I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, maybe everybody who's watching this video doesn't need everything uh, that I'm going to cover in uh, uh, these kind of videos, uh, but I've split it that to a couple of different videos. The first video is about acquiring an access token from uh, Microsoft Identity Platform and using that for calling Graph API. In the next videos uh, and upcoming videos, uh, I'm gonna use that access token to call Graph API and Graph and uh, get some uh, data out of uh, Microsoft Azure uh, or manipulate some stuff there like uh, creating custom policies or uh, deleting a user or things like that. But for this video, uh, let's start with uh, acquiring a token from Microsoft Identity Platform. Uh, as you can see in this diagram, um, if you want to call Microsoft Graph API, as I mentioned earlier, you need to have an access token. Uh, access token is a JSON web token, or shortly it's called JOT token, and uh, it, it is used for calling uh, Graph API is as a bearer token. Uh, the first step is uh, acquiring that token from identity platform. And in the and next steps, you add that token as a bearer token to your HTTP request. It can be a get request, post request, put request, uh, or uh, any kind of HTTP request you wanna uh, initiate to Graph API and you get the response if your token is a valid token and you have a right permission for uh, that kind of request. Okay, let's get our dirty and jump into the Azure portal. The first step is creating an app registration and for creating app registration, just in the search bar in the Azure portal, type in app registration. It navigates you to the app registration screen. Click on new registration. Give it a user-friendly name. I'm gonna name it demo app. For the supported account types, uh, I use accounts in this organization directory only because I want to access this uh, app registration with the user who are already defined and created in this organization. There are other options uh, which may suit you for other different scenarios. Uh, leave the redirect URI empty for now and click on register. creates app registration for you. Uh, what we need from here is a client ID or application ID and the tenant ID or directory ID. Uh, 
uh, we use this stuff for calling uh, Microsoft Identity Platform endpoint and getting an access token. Uh, but before that, we need to create a secret here. So we navigate to the certificates and secrets section and click on new client secret. Give it a name. App secret one. And you can choose when this secret is expired. I will pick up six months for now and click on add. Secret is created here. Just copy that value and uh, paste that somewhere in the notepad. So can use that later. Just bear in mind when you create a secret in app registration. Uh, for security reason, if you leave this screen, you're not able to see this secret value anymore. So uh, what we usually do in a uh, real scenario, we grab this value and store it in Azure Key Vault. And so uh, it's a safe place to store as well as uh, uh, holding that for uh, subsequent uh, um, requirement if you are if you need to access that value you can uh, refer to the azure key vault all right before going to the next step which is using postman for calling uh, identity platform token endpoint uh, i need to show you the api permission section as well so if we go to the api permission you see that by default microsoft graph and user.read permission is added to the uh, API permission uh, for different things that you want to do using Microsoft Graph API, you need to add different type of permission. So if you click add a permission, you see a bunch of different things. You want to call Microsoft Graph, you choose this one, and then the next step, uh, you need to pick up a uh, write permission for the specific scope that you want to uh, uh, you want to change or you want to create something or you want to read data from uh, if you want to access office 365 apis you need to go to this section if you want to use your custom api you can find it in my apis etc i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cover this stuff in this video so leave it for now just the Default user.read uh, permission is enough for what we want to do. Let's go to the postman and create a request for uh, acquiring an access token using the app registration that we created in the previous system. Okay, in postman, it just create a new request. Uh, the request needs to be a post request. In the URL section, we use https colon slash slash login dot microsoft dot com. And then you need to put your tenant ID here. The tenant ID is coming from app registration that we created earlier. You refer to that. You've got tenant ID here. Just copy that. Come back here. Paste it here. Then slash both to slash token. Go to the body. You need to select the URL encoded format and add these parameters to the request. First one is grant type. It's 
client underscore credentials. The next parameter is client ID. And it's coming from the app registration that we created. Come back to the Azure portal, copy the client ID or application ID from here, paste it in the value section, and the next parameter we need client secret. Client underscore secret. Come back to the portal, go to the secret, and copy that to the clipboard, paste it here, and last parameter is resource parameter, its value is Microsoft Graph API. That's the parameter that we need to provide for calling token endpoint. And make sure that you are using tenant ID in the URL as well. So now if I click on send, here you go. We've got an access token and we can use this access token in our subsequent calls to uh, calling graph api and do whatever we want to do on the uh, azure uh, cloud services and we can manipulate resources or anything else that i'm going to cover in the next video if you are interested in, in a specific area uh, that uh, we can use Microsoft Graph API uh, to manipulate and manage them. Just uh, feel free to add a comment and I'll try to make a video as soon as possible for that specific area. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, just to recap, there is Microsoft Graph API. It's a uh, RESTful API, uh, you can use that for managing different resources on the Azure Cloud Services. Uh, it's as easy as calling a RESTful API, but for calling that API because it's protected by um, authentication, uh, you need to provide uh, access token. For acquiring that access token, um, you can call Microsoft Identity Platform Endpoint uh, with a uh, required parameter and uh, secrets and acquire that token and then use that token as a better token to call the Microsoft Graph API. Uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, in upcoming video, I'll uh, cover some other stuff uh, about Graph API, how we can use Graph API to do different things on Azure. Thanks for watching. Bye.